Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Mr. Honey. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about the streams of income, and this is going to be where we start venturing more into the financial aspect of financial fitness. So go ahead and start to get out your streams of income notes, and we will get started. The internal entry for today is go to Google. Search the seven streams of income of most millionaires. There should be an article from LinkedIn. Give it a little read, and then write in your journal some of your thoughts about it. What do you think about that? So, that's what you're going to do uh, for your journal entry today, and then we're going to get started with your notes. So, why do we need multiple streams of income? Well, first off, things cost money, and oftentimes we uh, want to have multiple streams of income because we want to be able to handle um, finances by ourselves. Along with that, we uh, many of us, I would assume, want uh, have to have financial success. And then, if you have any other ideas as to why um, we would have multiple streams of income, just write that down. Think about that. There are considered to be about seven streams of income that most people should have within their lifetime, and it's important to understand the different types that you have. So the first one we have is earned income, which is money you make at your job. J-O-B stands for just over broke, all right? That's what it means. In other words, you are making money on someone else's job, on someone else's um watch. In other words, someone typically watches over you. They control your pay and how much you earn. And you know, it's great to have that. It's great to make some money uh, at a job. But in the way, if you are literally limited to how much that person pays you or the stipulations they set that allow you to make that money. So, um, a lot of times people get multiple jobs to make more money. But at the end of the day, you can only make as much as that person is willing to pay. Now, another uh, area of streams of income is Profit, which is money earned from selling something at a higher price than what it costs. So, for example, you may end up buying a pair of shoes. Maybe you end up buying um, clothing or end up buying something to where you can uh, sell a service that literally costs less to produce or costs less to buy than it is what you can sell it for. And a lot of times people have made several amounts of dollars um, using this method of maintaining and getting profit, like reselling and things of that nature. Another one is interest, which is money you get as a result of lending it to someone else. So, for example, this is how you make money in the bank, is that you lend this money um, to the bank, you put it in savings. When you put money into savings, that's basically allowing the bank to utilize your money um, and how they see fit. And oftentimes when you let money sit in what is called an interest-bearing savings account, you get paid a little bit of kickback of it. So in other words, you're making money um, as a result of lending it to someone, for example, the bank. You have dividend, which is money you get as a result of return on shares of a company. So what this basically means is that um, when you have certain shares that you own within the stock market, sometimes people pay out, and sometimes these companies pay out dividends, and you get a little bit of money as a result of the return off of that share. So a lot of times, you know, it's not selling shares, you um, end up, the stock typically makes, um, or the company ends up making a surplus, and then they give out dividends to other people, and you get the right to either keep it or you can reinvest it. And so that's one of the cases from there. So when, a lot of times when you see stocks or shares associated with dividends. Next, you have rental income, and that is money you get as a result of renting out an asset. So in other words, when you rent out property, when you rent cars, when you rent technology, when you rent something, um, you typically have to pay money to someone, and that person tends to make money off of renting something out. And so nowadays, um, the rental market is blowing up and people are making money um, renting certain things out as far as even going from the process of renting clothes, okay? Um, so people are renting out large high ticket items and then, you know, they make money off of that. So that's another big thing. So here is where a lot of people get confused. Rental income is you are renting out an asset, something that is typically physical and you make money off of renting that out. Interest, as we talked about, is when you are lending money and earning money off of that. So it's just something you need to uh, understand from that uh, standpoint. 
Next, we have capital gains, which is money you get as a result of an increase of value of something. So, for example, stocks or the house or your house, you know, it appreciates in value. You're going to make a little bit of money on that. So as you make money and, and, and something increases in value, you obviously are going to <clears throat> have a little bit of what's called the capital gains of it. You earn a little bit more off of that. So this is one of the biggest things that comes like when stock holdings and shares and all that good stuff is that once again, this is not related to the dividend where the dividend is a surplus of money that you can receive back from the company. Capital gains is the actual increase of that amount of shares. That is the actual increase of how much it's worth and what you can sell it for. Okay. And then next we have royalties, which is money you get as a result of letting someone use your ideas, your product, or your processes. So, for example, I've talked about this before in many of my classes. When you have, for example, if y'all remember that song, uh, Panda by Designer, um, a lot of people got really upset when that song blew up because it was like, at one point, the number one song in the country made millions of dollars, all right? And a lot of people did not realize this, is that the beat, when he bought that beat to make that song, he bought it for $200. And a lot of people got really upset because they're like, yo, this producer produced this beat. This guy's making millions of dollars, and this producer's only got like $200. That's not fair, you know? How could he do that? That's just terrible. Well, what a lot of people don't realize is that in many cases, some of that millions of dollars actually could get kicked back to the producer because of royalty. So for example, a small percentage of that could go back to the producer because once again, it's money that as a result of someone using your ideas, your product, or processes. In order to for designer to make Panda, he ended up using um, you know, this guy's beat, which was his product. And you know, while designer obviously would make the bulk of the money and the record company would make the bulk of the money, the producer probably gets a small little kickback from using that. Um, this is also big within commercials. So if you are watching a commercial and you hear a song that is very popular in the background, chances are the artist which created that song and the record company which owns that song gets to collect a royalty check from that. And, you know, if your song is really popular and gets used everywhere, a lot of times those royalty checks can be very, very lucrative. Um, you can't talk income without talking about this guy. This is Shaquille O'Neal. Obviously, he um, makes the bulk of it. So Dr. O'Neal's streams. Like, if you think about Dr. O'Neal, and yes, he is a doctor. You know, the guy has his own basketball career. He's had celebrity endorsements with Gold Bond, Fruity Pebbles, and Icy Hot. He has invested in many different things, Onions, Pretzels, so many things he's invested in. Uh, he had a movie deal with Kazam. He owns several amounts of real estate. Um, he's also a police officer in South Florida and has a net worth of $350 million, all right? And net worth, a lot of people think that when they see net worth, that is the amount of money that they have sitting in the bank, and that's not necessarily the case. Um, your net worth um, can be what it is, is your assets minus your liability. So in other words, if everything he owns that he owns and you minus that by everything he owes or you take away everything he owes from everything he owns he probably has about 350 million dollars worth of stuff along with money so what are some of the streams of income that are good for high school students so y'all think about it part-time job allowances that sort of stuff all right so this is how you guys can make your money so another big thing that you want to think about when you think about this is you want to figure out your projected monthly income. And in order to calculate your projected monthly income, you want to list all of the streams that you have. Then you want to either make the amount that you make per hour, and then for the hour, calculate the amount you make per week, and then multiply that by four, and then add all the numbers together. Now this can be really, really confusing if you're not super, super math-minded. So first off, use a calculator when we do this. So for example, there is a lot of times that you have to look at certain things, and most of us work in things like per hour. So let's say, for instance, you have the stream, the amount per hour, and then the amount per week, i.e. times 
20 hours. So, so let's say, for instance, you have a part-time job. You make $10 an hour but work 20 hours, so you're making from just this part-time job $200. So you also get an allowance from your parents, and let's say that's per week. So, or let's say you get an allowance per parents. So obviously that's not um, per, excuse me, that is not a per hour thing. So obviously that could be like if your parents give you $20 a week, well, then you have that $20 per week. So then when you add that up, that is 220 per week, and then you multiply that by four, all right? And you can write down this process because obviously it's going to be something that you want to have uh, that you are prepared to use. So calculating the projected monthly income stream for a salary. Now, salary is typically the amount you make per year, and the biggest thing to do is start with your salary, divide it by 12, and that's your projected monthly gross income. So your salary, let's say, for instance, you make 60 k a year, divide it by 12, that's bringing in about 5000 a month. Let's say you make 28 k per year. That means that you would divide that by 12, and you're making about $2,333.33. All right, so you, this is your gross. So this isn't with taxes, this isn't with deductions, but it is one of those things that we want to get settled in the mindset of thinking that you want to be able to calculate. So for your assignment, you're going to click on the assignment streams of income and you're going to complete this assignment and then finish any work that you have. If you have any questions, let me know and I will do my best to help you. But this is going to be basic um, from the standpoint of calculating your streams of income. So look back into, for example, calculating the monthly salary or calculating the month, the monthly amount you make based off salary and look into calculating the amount that you make based off per hour of long with multiple streams of income. So at this point, you guys go ahead, get started, and make it happen.